it's judgment day. Today, Audi in Miami will be inspecting the Audi RS6 that I just rebuilt. Dude, get this thing out of here. <laughs> this rebuild has had its ups <laughs> and its downs. And this car has almost pushed me over the edge. No, 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 no. I literally can't believe this. But regardless of all of that, in the last video, we finally rebuilt this car yes! and got it back on the road for good. But it's still not quite complete. So this is one of the issues while we're bringing it in. <laughs> Sometimes the car will not start. Brand new battery on there. And all we need to start it is the jumper pack, which we brought with us. But we're going to explain that to one of the Audi techs. But it's funny it's just happened now. <laughs> Luckily, we're in the right place for breakdowns. We have the professionals. And later, they're going to be grading my work on a scale of 1 to 10. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably say it was a solid... But for now, we need to get this car started so Audi can begin work to it. Yeah, first time every what, time. What, what is wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now... It's time for the handover. I'm heading into the dealership to check the car in and it's time to take a step back and let them do the work. We've got a lot to do on it. We've got a lot of diagnosing, we've got a lot of work. PJ is going to sort us out. He's a great guy, we've got good vibes here in Miami. I think it's going to go well. What score do you think is going to give you out of 10? Solid 10. Feeling confident. What do you think? <laughs> Nine and a half. Nine and a half. <laughs> if he doesn't turn it off, it's a 10. Because if he has to turn it back on again, there could be an issue. Look at it. The RS6 looks unreal, but it's still missing a few final touches before we can call it finished. And the guys at Audi were clearly amazed by the car because you can't get this model in the US. I mean, since you got this car, I, I've been like, wow, I wish. Because this was the best chassis. The C7 and the C7.5 yeah, yeah, were my favorite chassis. They can't get it here either, can they? No. This is the new RS6, the C8, and this is the only one you can get in America. I don't know how well they're selling over here, but you can't get the C7. The C8 does look quite nice though. I can see why they've got this and not my one. This looks really thin compared to your wide body car though. Yeah, it does. It looks well skinny. <laughs> Even on the back, it looks well skinny. America have always had the RS7 and the S6, but because my RS6 was never available in the country because they didn't see a market for it, it's now only allowed to be here for a certain amount of time. Yeah, and we're we... only allowed to be here for a year with that. Yeah. So, oh, really? They let yeah. you here for a year? When you One year. with your tag, I was like... An 800 dollars for four days insurance. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I'd do it, man. All <laughs> those here in Florida, dude, are straight. They're made to rip this thing, man. I mean, God. So first job, after the drag racing and a lot of miles, I don't know if you guys can see, but on these brake discs, there's a lot of heat spots on there and the pads a pretty shot so we thought whilst we're here better safe than sorry replace the brake discs and pads which are pretty expensive to say the least but let's see how far it gets first first thing off are the wheels but as pj started work on the car he noticed something a little strange on the us spec cars even though we don't have the rs6 we have the rs7 and we have the a6 and we have the s6 the starter button is on the other side so every technician figured that we, it was just over there because they only wanted to make one center console. Now it turns out that you guys have it on the opposite side too. I'm sorry, Audi, it's stupid because you, know, we, you gotta get on the other side of the car if you're in a situation like this to start it. It's quite refreshing to hear that even Audi techs question some of the choices that Audi make when building these cars. But now both wheels are off, we can now inspect how much wear these brakes actually have. So you can see here, look at all the heat spots on the disc. I don't know how we've done that. I don't know how we've managed. This is the last time the car's in the ramp. To get the brake pads out, PJ pushes them against the pistons in the caliper, then knocks the pins out. What's it like having someone else do the work while you just sit and watch? On this car, a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Once the pins removed and the retaining clip, you can pull the pads out and you can see how worn they are. I'm gonna hit it with my purse, okay? <laughs> Now, PJ had a bet with one of the other techs that he'd be able to remove the disc without taking the caliper off. And he was right. I was right. Oh, that I was freaking right. No, <laughs> I did it on camera, dude. <laughs> so if PJ had to remove the caliper, I'd have to pay for bolts, new bolts, because they're stretch bolts. But because he didn't, 
we're good. It, it's, the, it's the one job you don't have to remove the engine to do, so we, we should be okay. Then out comes the new oh, discs. Yeah. That looks a lot nicer than the one that was on the car. Yeah, yeah. Is it's, that gonna go on? It's a lot thicker. You know what's the craziest thing about these things? Is they're not directional. So, as you can see, they can go left or right, even though they're the, you would think that with the way the fans go, that it would be like directional. But since they gas to the inside or gas to the outside, depending on which side they're on, unit direction. You might notice that these discs look a little unusual for the normal brake discs. Like a glove! Instead of being round, they have this fanned edge all the way around. Audi apparently did this for weight reduction and potentially to help with cooling. And these type of discs are found on loads of other Audis and also on the KTM Crossbow. Wheels going on. Now we're about to find out whether it actually starts as well, but if it doesn't start, then we've got something else to uh, to try and get them to fix. Because <laughs> we don't want to fix it. <laughs> doesn't start? No, so the solenoid, you can hear the solenoid going, but then it will say like decharging battery, coolant fault yeah. or something along those lines. We just had an update, I don't know what it allows but I, would, I could probably really quickly look at the measured value block. As soon as you put a jumper on it, it will start up. Now this confused both of us. It's like a junction box, which is that the battery, the, the cable from the battery goes all the way to that junction box and then it transfers from that junction box and goes to the starter. We don't know whether there's an issue in there, but that's why I was be interested to see whether we can get a, get a power reading on that on that one there and that's exactly what we did and you can see the results nine ten oh it's coming is it really that low yeah yeah it it's climbing though and it's... but then i bet at the battery i bet we'll have 12. only nine volts at the front and on the battery of course yeah. 12.4 so we was losing power somewhere i had no idea what it was we're either, <laughs> we're locked out of i guess the european spec cars so it's scanning it, but it, it, I had to put all the information in manually. It had no idea. That's a pretty good amount of drain. PJ plugged in his diagnostic tool and could see the battery was being drained by something. We still don't know what. Drain. Usually with uh, this generation car with engine off, at least the American spec cars, uh, I'm not seeing those that, that high a number. Uh, I'm usually seeing somewhere in the single digits with, right. the, with the lights off, ignition on, everything off, you know, just sitting here parked. PJ then read the codes on the car to see if there's any faults. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, this would, I would need, uh, well, you guys would say a cup of tea, but I would say, you know, I need a cup of coffee <laughs> and just sit down a long time with this because I don't know, I mean, obviously I would clear, I would, we're gonna clear faults today and yeah. see what we can do. If you're only getting nine volts there though, there's some kind of issue with the cabling in this car. Yeah. Because some, there's a voltage drop along that cable or whatever. So this cable, which goes to the starter motor, and this one, the ground, uh, is joined up in a box in the middle, and we think the issue is gonna be from that box in the middle to there. Because as soon as we're gonna give this cable some power, I think we should start up. But saying that, if we give it power and it doesn't start up, it could be an issue further down the cable Maybe the connection on the starter motor. I, I really don't know, but let's see what this uh, comes up with. Give it a go. Did it just kick off once? Yeah. Yeah. And it starts, so I, I have no idea. <laughs> Audi. <laughs> Let's get back to that later, but for now, we've got to go off the two post ramp and onto the big four wheel alignment ramp, where PJ is starting to attach the equipment, which he has to improvise with because he never normally gets cars with extended arches on there. And this is a job that I've been putting off for a while. Even though when I bought the car, it didn't have any suspension damage, after rebuilding it, I probably should have got it four wheel aligned. These are the mirrors. They run off the lasers that you see right there. And that's basically how you're gonna get your alignment specs. It sees the angle. We're gonna do a quick calibration. And then the system will be able to tell us how far out these wheels are. But because it's so wide, I think it's confusing the machine. Uh, look at that. It has no idea who you are. Unable to determine yeah. VIN. Yeah. <laughs> well banned. This meant PJ had to manually tell the system what the car was, then do the calibration, and after that, it will tell us how far off it is. Oh, we got some good green on the front though. Oh, there's a lot of red on the front. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
Okay. The red means it's out of tolerance and green means it's intolerance. And because we've had this front subframe on and off a lot of times, it is going to affect the wheel alignment. And that clearly shows in our readings. I don't know how we've drove in a straight line. Now we're never going to get the adjustment done to the factory specifications. That's because the car's much wider than usual and the suspension is lowered. But PJ's going to do his best to get it in tolerance. But what I wanted to know is whilst PJ was underneath the car, whether he noticed anything unusual. I don't see anything here that would put me on edge with the car. I mean, if somebody was looking at this thing used, I'd say, hey man, it's a it's a 10 year old car. What do you expect? It, this isn't bad at all. Good news. Now that's good news, but if he were to check the car out using car vertical, he would see the true history of it. The check would show that it's never had mileage fraud. It's not got any outstanding finance, but it was in an accident. And you can see the actual date when the car was written off. I mean, it's, it's, it's believe it or not, you are not terrible. Your thrust angle is only out a little bit. Alongside that, you could see a full timeline of the car every time an ownership's been changed and a registration plate. And sometimes when you check a car out using car vertical, if it wasn't an accident, it may show you the photos that were taken at the car crash auction website. So you can see exactly where the damage was. So to check your car out on car vertical, click the link in the description box below and use code MATT for discount on that check. Now, brakes done, wheel alignment done, time for the health check. Nope. No. Oh. So we're dying to fix this and it's got to be a connection issue. So maybe we clip to us in the future where you and my dad could solve this. It's us from the future. <laughs> <laughs> so it has an intermittent starting issue. Sometimes it start, sometimes it won't. Let's see if my dad can solve it. I'm an Audi tech now. Went training yesterday, didn't I? <laughs> Audi tech. <laughs> Come on then, Audi Tech, we've got to fix this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we think it's got something to do with that junction box, as I mentioned. And to get to it, you've got to take all this off. Uh, there's some important electrical connections. We think that Matt might have put the cable <laughs> in the wrong place. No, no. Normally, I would say it's your fault, but Matt's not here to defend himself, so we'll blame Matt. <laughs> oh, look, that needs cleaning. What was that from? That was evidence of another issue that we had. No! <laughs> <laughs> now, in our defense to this issue, on the particular day of putting the engine in, we took an engine out and put it back in three times. We think the fault is in there. And we ended up finishing the job at around quarter to three in the morning, which maybe explains the little mistakes like not tightening the ground wire up on the starter. Oh! Oh, I'm fetching him! No. <laughs> Is it my fault? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this was this was a test. Right. This was. Do you know what I was saying? All the faults in this car are self-inflicted. <laughs> oh my goodness! Would you have left that loose, Freddie? I. You know what? I can't. I, I Bear can't say no, but I guess. Wait, wait, wait. We need VAR on this. <laughs> VAR, VAR. Who did that? Uh, oh! What's going oh, on there? Oh, oh, no, 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 oh. I don't think it was Matt's fault, Tony. <laughs> Freddie? Yeah. Can yeah. you tell me who. <laughs> Listen, man, you know, you come to my house <laughs> and you use my facilities and this is how you repay me? I don't know, like, I just, that looks a lot like you. <laughs> Listen, could, it, could it have been a joint I feel, I feel like anytime I touch a car, you have to check my work, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what does it say? HWBT, hard work beats Tavarish? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's fixed. Back to Alder. This was it. Months of hard work, of rebuilding and modifying my dream Audi RS6, which has been all the way to America. What a story this car's got. And finally now, it's been assessed by Audi in Miami, and I'm about to find out what they think of it as an overall car. PJ, you've been amazing on camera and around the car as well. Now, you've seen under the car, you've seen around the car. What we wanted to know is kind of general, what do you think? Are the panel lines okay? Is everything generally okay with the car? And just give us a score out of 10 of the sort of rebuild and the general build of the car. You know what, honestly, you know, I've seen the car before to see it in person is something, something really, really special. 
and I love it. It's one of a kind. I, I have to say, I looked over it, I looked under it, I looked in it. <laughs> and it, it, you know, I can tell just being, as long as I've been in the field with these cars, I can tell things have happened and things have been worked on. But uh, underneath, it looks great. It looks better than most 10-year-old cars that I've seen. And I, I, I mean, it's a clean bill of health. Pa panel gaps look good. I told you there's some brands, some EV brands that I won't mention names, that I, <laughs> I that, that the panel gaps are a lot better than cars I see brand new. Underneath looks fantastic. I told you all the hardware is there. I mean, it looks like it did an off-road stint and some things looked a little dirty, but everything is there and everything is intact. And I, I give it a clean bill of health. On a scale of one to 10, I would probably say it was a solid seven, maybe eight. Solid, I'll take that, I'll take that. You said it was gonna be a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is a 10 in my book. Uh, but I mean, there's some things that I, if I didn't see the hood up, or there's some things that, uh, that I would have probably gave it like an 8.5, but I think it's a solid car, man. It's a solid runner, and like I told you, if you ever want to accept my offer and put it back on a boat, I'd be willing to buy it. <laughs> we'll see about it. So you heard it here. BJ's been amazing, Audi has been amazing. Hopefully now, this is the last that Audi will ever go on the ramp until it needs a service. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the sub thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. Peace Woo! out. <laughs> the absolute nightmare of an Audi RS6 engine. Well, this is an RS7 engine, isn't it? Yeah, it's not a nightmare. What? It's not a nightmare. I love these. You do? Yeah, these are great. Like a truck I just can't deny